Hello, today we're going to do a special introduction to the whole post-exilic period. And this, of course, would be the uh, period after the return from the exile. There's so much confusion because our Old Testament, and for that matter the New, is not in chronological order. And many of the post-exilic books are spread throughout the canon. Uh, as you know, the Jews divided the canon into the Torah, the prophets, and the writings. Well, when they did that that way, it somehow fouled up the chronological order. So I want to try to go back and give you a brief overview up till the post-exilic period and then show you where the books fit in the history of the day. And then I think it would be very good to get your reference Bible so we can mark in the index on which ones are Assyrian, which ones are Babylonian, and which ones are Persians as far as the prophets and the books. It will help you tremendously to try to put the Old Testament together when you read it. Now remember that God chose Abraham, we're in Genesis, to choose a kingdom of priests. And so Abraham and the patriarchs, we got Isaac and Jacob, and then Jacob's 12 sons make up the nation of Israel. But there's famine in the land, and they go down to Egypt for the famine. Joseph is already there. As you know, they were, in, they were because they were so successful in the land of Goshen, they were put into bondage. And they did not come out until Moses led them out, um, and we begin the Exodus experience. Uh, because of their unbelief at Kadesh, they could not enter the promised land directly. They had to wander for 40 years. During that period, Moses also rebels, so he dies before they enter the promised land. Uh, Moses transfers leadership to Joshua just before the crossing of the Jordan. They cross into the promised land. The book of Joshua is the conquest of the promised land, not completely, but the main strongholds. Uh, the book of Judges is an attempt at every tribe doing their own thing. But apostasy occurred, and they had foreign invasions, and over and over. From this uh, fracturedness of unity or attempts at uh, uh, autonomy of the tribes, we move to the time of Samuel, where the defeat of the Philistines uh, solidifies the people under the first monarchy, and that is of Saul. We know of Saul's jealousy through First and Second Samuel that comes to him uh, going crazy and Samuel anointing David as king. We learn of David as king through the rest of the historical books and the intrigue with his sons because of his sin with Bathsheba. And then we have finally Solomon taking the throne. We have the life of Solomon, the building of the temple. You can find this in Kings and Chronicles. Uh, Solomon's son Rehoboam had as heavy a taxation and the grandiose building plans of his daddy. And the kingdom is going to split uh, over the um, uh, efforts of an Ephraimatic labor leader named Jeroboam. So a real important date is 922. The northern ten tribes and the southern three tribes of Judah, Simeon, and Benjamin form the two kingdoms. The northern ten tribes have a series of prophets. The southern two tribes have a series of prophets. Example, we've got Isaiah and Micah in the south. We've got Amos and Hosea in the north. Uh, and we, we see that kind of split now for several hundred years. The Assyrians take the northern ten tribes captive in 722 B.C., so a 200-year uh, period for the northern ten tribes. Uh, the southern two, th three tribes survive that, the whole account of Shennacherib's army being killed in one night by the death angel. Uh, we're, in the, we're in the kings of Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah at this period. Uh, then we have the southern t three tribes continue to sin, and uh, Babylon takes them into exile in 586. It's when the temple is destroyed. There are three deportations through there, starting back in 605, where Daniel and Ezekiel and 10,000 leading men go into captivity. But the temple isn't destroyed, and the city isn't destroyed until 586. And so that's where we usually date the, the exile of Judah. They are in Babylon now for several several years, and uh, they're coming back from Babylon, and this is where the post-exilic period picks up. Now, they come back, and the key date here is the transition from the Babylonian Empire to the Persian Empire. We call it the Medo-Persian because the one who seems to solidify this is Cyrus II. Now, he is the grandson of the Median king whom he overthrows, and so he unifies Medo-Persia, or Parsa, they're sometimes called. Uh, and they invade Babylon. Now, Nabonidus is king, but he has a co-region in his place. 
uh, Belshazzar, we learn from Daniel chapter 5. So Babylon falls almost without a fight to Cyrus II. In 538 B.C., Cyrus issues a decree that all the, the exiled people can go home. Now, he's not doing this because he's such a great religious person. He's doing it to solidify his reign. So as the Assyrians, uh, who seem to learn from the Hittites, and the Babylonians exported people uh, to try to keep them uh, under control, Cyrus is going to let them go home so they'll like him and not rebel. And he's going to allow them to rebuild their temples and set up their local gods, and the Jews happen to be one of these. So in 538, the, issue, uh, the decree is issued. We learn from the books of Ezra, especially Ezra 1 through 7, that under the divinic seed, Zerubbabel, okay, and under the high priest uh, in the line, uh, Joshua, and 50,000 or so exiles return to Jerusalem to rebuild the city. For some reason, Ezra leaves, and during the period that he's left, we have some of the other prophets coming in. Uh, then we have Nehemiah coming, who's a cupbearer to Artaxerxes the first. Um, Ezra returns, and so we learn much of this period from the books of Ezra and Nehemiah. Uh, the book of Esther is also in this period, and her husband seems to be Xerxes the first, which in the Bible is called Ahasuerus. We're not certain of that; we still think that. Now the prophets during this time are three that you know of: Haggai. Uh, Zechariah, and toward the very end of this period, somewhere around 430, uh, Malachi. It is also probable that Obadiah spoke during this time, but we don't know where, okay? Now, that is a brief overview, getting us up to the post-exilic period. Now, what I want to do is go over some of these um, major kings of these empires, and then kind of go over a time chart with you and go to the reference, in the, the uh, index in the front of your Bible, okay? Let's start with 605 B.C. Um, that's when Nabonidus, the, uh, the father of um, Nebuchadnezzar II, uh, is going to die. Um, Nebuchadnezzar takes his place. Excuse me, not, not Nabonidus, it's nebo Pelazar. I'm sorry, 605. And then Nebuchadnezzar II reigns from 605 to 562. Now, Nebuchadnezzar II is the one who will take the southern two tribes. He is the one that is dealt with so extensively in the first six chapters of Daniel. So you might want to read Daniel to see something about Nebuchadnezzar II. Then we have a little known emperor known as Evil Merodach, and he reigned from 562 to 560. And then uh, Nerglazer, <laughs> 560 to 556. And then in 556, we have several small kings that didn't last long. 556 to 539 is, is Nabonidus. Now, he's the one whose uh, co-regent son, Belshazzar, is going to lose the kingdom uh, to Cyrus. And that happened in 539. Matter of fact, we've gotten so specific that it seems that Gobrias was the general of Cyrus that conquered the city. But on October 11th, 539, Cyrus entered the city. And most people saw him as a liberator. Okay, Cyrus II. Uh, now, let's go to the, we're beginning the Medo-Persian Empire at this point. From uh, 550 to 530 is Cyrus II. And uh, he starts what is called the Archimedean Empire, all right? From 530 to 522, his son, Cambys II, a very aggressive king, added Egypt and, Cy and uh, Cyprus to this. And then in 522 to 586, we have Dyrus I, Hastrapes. Now, there has been a lot of controversy about the Dyrus mentioned in Daniel. And I'm not sure where he fits. It is obvious he is not Dyrus I. That's much too late in history. I think maybe it's Gobrias, maybe it's another name for Cyrus himself. I hope you'll send for our study on Daniel where I go into the details of this history there. Then we're from 486 to 465, it's Xerxes I, which we think is Esther's husband, Ahasuerus of the Bible. And then Artaxerxes I, now this is the king that let Ezra return, he, and he, Ezra is a major figure in rabbinical Judaism. He is the one who they think edited the whole Old Testament. Many think he wrote First and Second Chronicles. Uh, many think that he wanted to set the great synagogue that started the, the idea of rabbinical Judaism uh, in place. So both Art Xerxes the first is for Ezra, and he is, and Nehemiah is his cupbearer, which will come later. 
Then we have from 424 to 404, Dyrus the second. And then we have 404 to 359, Artaxerxes II. And 359 to 338, Artaxerxes the third. And uh, beyond that, I don't need to go. We're moving into the Greek period, uh, Philip of Macedon and Alexander the Great, and then his death and the four generals. But that's another story. That's known as the inner biblical period. And we'll cover that in a special introduction at a different time. But today I want to do basically um, the post-exilic. Now I want, to, I want you to think in your mind a timeline that begins with Cyrus' decree of 538. This will be included for those of you who get our free outline. And if you notice, there, there's two different kinds of people going to be working. There's going to be the kings of Persia, there's going to be the prophets, and there's going to be the historical figures. Okay? So if we start in 538, it is probable that Haggai, whose major thrust was the rebuilding of the temple. Now they had built their homes and they were trying to get, but they had neglected God's temple. And Haggai comes and really emphasizes rebuilding the temple. And we think that's about 519 B.C. In 520 begins the uh, prophecy of Zechariah. Now Zechariah is a very unusual book. Chapters 1 through 8 are specifically dated, the prophet is named, and the historical setting is the post-exilic period. It might surprise you, but chapters 1 through 8 is quoted extensively in the book of the Revelation. Now chapters 9 through 14, there is no date, there is no prophet named, there is no historical setting, and this section of the book is quoted extensively in the Gospels of the New Testament. So around 520. Now, we, Obadiah is in here somewhere, but I'm, I'm just not sure where. Now, in 530, Cyrus dies. His son, Cambys II, takes the throne. In 516, the second temple is finished. Now think about that. The second temple is finished. The old men who saw Solomon's temple wept because it was just nothing to compare. Now later on, Herod is going to rebuild the second temple to try to get in with the Jews. For Remember, Herod the Great was not Jewish, but Edomian, okay, from Edom. And he wanted to uh, endear himself to the Jewish population, so he built many projects, and the one we think of most is that beautiful temple of Jesus' day, okay? Uh, we have in 586 to 564, this is uh, Xerxes I, which we think Esther the Queen belongs in. Now, um, we think her name means Myrtle. Hadassah is the Hebrew of it. Uh, she, this little book, Esther, is in a, the writing section of the canon in a special group of five books called the Migaloth. And each one of these five little books, like Song of Song and Ruth and Ecclesiastes, those kind of, and Esther in there, uh, are read at a separate feast day. Now, Ruth, excuse me, Esther is read at the Feast of Purim. All right? Now, if we come to the time of Art Xerxes I, 464 to 423, this is where Ezra chapters 7 through 10 and Nehemiah begin right here. Okay? Now, why, why Ezra came early and left, we just don't know, but there's a real gap in, in the book of Ezra. Now, in 430, the big issue under Nehemiah was getting the walls of the city rebuilt. And there is major problem from Sanballat, who is the Samaritan ruler, and Tobit, who's another ruler in the area. Uh, they're mad because the Jews would not let them help. Sanballat is a Yahwehist because his children have uh, Yahwistic names. Uh, but he seems to be a, a, <laughs> not a purebred enough Yahwehist for these returning Judeans, and so they won't let him help. So he writes a letter to the, to the king of Persia, and all kinds of problems develop that stop the rebuilding of the walls for a period. Uh, this king, Artaxerxes I, searches the records for Cyrus II's decree, finds it, and allows them to rebuild the walls. It says they finished them in, in 52 days, which seems almost unbelievable. They may have finished the, the walls themselves in 52 days, but the gates and the turrets and the towers and the strength of the walls took much, much longer than that. Okay, so this is about the period. So Nehemiah, we would date from 445 B.C. to 433 B.C., okay? Now, if we could uh, look at the index of your Bible for a minute, I think this is going to help you. Let's, let's just go through here and see if we can put some of, the, some of the dates and times in. Now, first of all, we have the first five books of the Bible, which we call the Pentateuch. And the time that this was written is by Moses around 1290 B.C. Now, Abraham lived around 2000 B.C. 
And however before that creation occurred, we don't know. But, but Moses, you know, we got the, the exiles around 1290 B.C., so that's when it was written. We have Joshua and Judges we call the conquest of the promised land. And the time for Joshua and Judges is around 1250 to 1200. We've learned from archaeological evidence of Jericho that that's about the date for this. Uh, we're, not, uh, we're not exactly certain. Uh, how long the period of Judges lasted. We think the period of Judges lasted from 1200 to 1020, and that'll be the beginning of the reign of Saul, okay? Now, the book of Ruth, we don't know exactly the time it fits, but it's obvious there was not war between Israel and her surrounding neighbors because of the, of the way they can move from Moab and back. Now, 1 Samuel is the reign of Saul. It goes from 1020 to 1000, okay? And then 2 Samuel is Saul and David, and then First Kings and the and First Kings all the way through Second Chronicles cover most of this period. They overlap many many books, and so they're and they are parallel. They they have different information. They're kind of like the Synoptic Gospels almost. They cover the same period, but they add details that the other one doesn't add. Now we come to Ezra and Nehemiah. Now this is the period of the return from the exile, and so we're dating it from 538 B.C., which is the decree of Cyrus, okay, uh, down to around 430. So that's the kind of the period in general. So these are post-exilic books. Then we have Esther. Of course, we, she's post-exilic, the reign of, of Xerxes I. Now, Job, it might surprise you, but Job is a patriarchal setting, 2000 B.C., okay? Now, it's a part of the wisdom literature, and whether it was oral tradition or we're just not sure, but it is an ancient setting, and obviously the tradition goes back to there. Now, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Song are also known as wisdom literature, which are the writing of the sages. And the period we think of, of, of them is a time of prosperity, a time of more freedom, more cultural aspects of life would be developed. We're thinking of the reigns of David and Solomon now for these books. Now, beginning with the prophets. Now, follow with me, if you would. Isaiah is the Assyrian period in Judah, okay, the Assyrian period in Judah, the 750s B.C. Now, Jeremiah is the Babylonian period in Judah, and um, he was called in 627 and had a long ministry, okay, down through the fall of Jerusalem. Yeah. All right, then uh, Lamentations would be uh, Babylonian, and uh, it seems to be written from Egypt. It seems to be by Jeremiah, okay, Ezekiel. Babylonian, and Ezekiel is in Babylon. He was probably taken captive in 605 B.C. Daniel, Babylonian, and he's in Babylon at the same time, okay? Then we have Hosea. Now, Hosea is the Assyrian time, and it's the nation of Israel around 750s B.C. Amos, Hosea, Israel, Micah, Isaiah, Judah, same period, 700s. Now, we have Joel, and we're just not sure at all where Joel fits. Not at all. <laughs> Amos, Assyrian, Israel, 760s. Obadiah is the Persian period, but when? We're not certain. Jonah is the Assyrian period. Remember Nineveh? So it's such a big city. That was the capital of Assyria. Micah uh, is the Assyrian period in Judah. Nahum is the Babylonian period um, around the O.S.C. 600, something like that. Then we have Habakkuk, Babylonian period. Zephaniah, Babylonian period. Haggai, Persian period. Zechariah, Persian period. Malachi, Persian period. Now, what I've done, and I, I want to close this time out, I want you to go back in your index, and I want to put the order of the books as I think they fit. And ju just write this beside. Uh, this is a picture of my Bible where I've put the numbers on one side and the enemy on the other and the date on the far side. This may be helpful to you. So let's start out. Genesis, number one. Exodus, number three. Leviticus, number four. Numbers, number five. Deuteronomy, six. Joshua, seven. Judges, eight. Ruth, eleven. First Samuel, nine. Second Samuel, ten. 1 Kings 13, 2 Kings 19, 1 Chronicles 12, 2 Chronicles 14, Ezra 33, Nehemiah 34, Esther 38, Job 2, Psalms 15, Proverbs 16, Ecclesiastes 17, Song of Songs 18, Isaiah 21, Jeremiah 28, 
Lamentations 32, Ezekiel 31, Daniel 29, Hosea 23, Joel, we're not sure, but 25, Amos 20, Obadiah 37, Jonah 22, but uncertain about that, Micah 24, Nahum 27, Habakkuk 30, Zephaniah 26, Haggai 35, Zechariah 36, and Malachi closing it out at 39. Now, I think one of the problems in trying to just go through the Old Testament and read it is that we really forget that this is not in chronological order. And so we make a lot of errors by trying to read through it and fit it in. Let me, listen to me. If there's about four or five dates that if you get these, you can put the whole Old Testament on these hangers. And these dates are 922, the kingdom splits, 722, the northern ten tribes captive, 586, the southern three tribes captive, 538, Cyrus's decree for the exiles to return home, 516, the rebuilding of the, seven, uh, the second temple, and then the Old Testament closes out around 430. From 430 B.C. until John the Baptist, there was no prophetic voice for Israel. This period is called the inner biblical period. This is where the Persian Empire gives way to the Greek Empire. Uh, this is where uh, the Maccabean revolt, all the book of Maccabees occur. And then this is where Herod comes to the throne through intrigue with Rome and finally the birth of Christ. And that brings us up to the New Testament. I hope this uh, brief historical survey has helped. I've given you extensive notes on the dates and the timelines. I've really enjoyed being with you, and I'll see you again, same time, same place, next week. God bless you.